Today we're going to be discussing bone scans in nuclear medicine. So bone scans utilize nuclear imaging to identify various bone diseases. Um, they usually identify areas of increased osteoblastic turnover, which is then picked up by nuclear imaging. Um, they're utilized for a variety of reasons. Uh, they can be used to identify primary bone malignancies, metastatic bone disease, Paget's disease, arthritis, or fractures, or in some cases for follow-up examinations, for example, if there's abnormal lab findings or unspecified bone pain. They can also be used to identify osteomyelitis and fractures. So they utilize radiopharmaceutical 99MTC methyl diphosphate. Um, 99MTC is just technetium, which is one of the commonly utilized radiopharmaceuticals in nuclear medicine. Eventually, the patients are placed under a gamma camera or a single photon emission compute tomography. Um, and then images are taken while injecting the tracer and eventually shortly after it. Um, so usually the images are collected initially, and then once the tracer is injected, and then a couple hours later, which can range from two to five hours. And again, it's dependent on the clinical judgment. So this is an example of a normal bone scan, and you'd usually want to start off by reading from top and working your way to the bottom. Um, so you generally start at the skull and then work your way downwards, and we notice how there's no increased areas of uptake anywhere. Thus, is a normal bone scan. Okay, so we start reading these scans by looking at the top and working our way to the bottom. Um, so in the skull, we first notice how there's focal areas of increased uptake over here, over here, over here. It's kind of spread out. Um, and then we notice over here, similarly in the skull, um, there's increased uptake in the back over here. And work our way downwards. We notice increased uptake in the shoulder um, and then working into the sternum right here and near the ribs and then working our way down, further increase uptake over here. Um, some of this is degenerative changes, although these specific focal areas are very much indicative of metastatic disease. And we work our way down, we notice increase uptake over here. Uh, again, it's very asymmetrical, and there's focal areas with increased uptake, and this would be one of the most common patterns for identification of metastatic disease. Okay, so we start off by looking at the skull and working our way downwards. Um, and over here, we can see increased areas of focal uptake over here, over here, kind of over here. And then working our way downwards, um, we notice further increased uptake in the shoulder. And again, this is a very asymmetrical pattern. And working our way downwards in the spine, increased uptake over here, increased focal uptake in the ribs. And again, down here, um, over here, and then in the spine again here. And then working our way down, we see increased focal uptake in the pelvic area over here, over here. And then over here, we can see in the femur increased uptake. And then next to the knees over here, and then working our way downwards. So again, this is indicative of a metastatic pattern. What you're looking for as focal areas of increased uptake that are randomly distributed. Again, start from the top and work our way to the bottom, and we notice how there's increased uptake present throughout the skull. So this is very diffuse uptake, which is present throughout the skull. It's prominently visible. And then work our way downwards, we see increased uptake in the sternum, increased uptake in the shoulders. And again, this is very symmetrical than what we previously saw. And similarly in the ribs over here, and then work our way downwards, we see the increased uptake in the pelvic area, and then work our way downwards in the knees, as well as the legs, and also we see it in the wrists and the elbows. Um, so this is actually indicative of metabolic disease, and there are certain signs that are very specific to a metabolic disease. For example, the skull with the diffuse uptake, which is present throughout the skull. This is different than metastatic disease, where we saw focal areas of increased uptake. And then working our way downwards, we see the sternum. This is known as a sternum tie, which is also indicative of metabolic disease, and the ribs along here, which is known for costochondral beating. And the symmetrical appearance in the tissues uh, and the joints area, we can see that over here as well. So again, these are signs that are commonly indicative of metabolic disease. And we don't generally know what's the cause of this metabolic disease. So a lot of different things can cause metabolic disease. For example, it can be due to primary hyperparathyroidism or end-stage renal disease causing renal osteodystrophy and so on. So bone scans kind of generally tell us if it's metabolic and then we have to figure out with clinical picture what it really is. 
Okay, so we can start again from top to bottom. And here we notice increased diffuse uptake throughout the skull over here, uh, very similar to the last scan. And then we work our way down and notice increased activity in the shoulders and then the sternal tie right over here and costochondral beating. Increased uptake in the elbows and the wrists over here. Um, and then increased activity in the pelvic area, the knees and the legs. So again, this is indicative of metabolic disease, um, as we can see by the diffuse pattern, very symmetrically identified in the joints area and in the sternum tie and the costochondral ribs, which are all the signs that you would look for an identification of metabolic bone disease. Okay, so we can start from top to bottom again. Um, the skull seems to be looking okay. Um, there's increased uptake in the sinuses. Um, this can be a very common finding. You can confirm that by looking at the posterior side. And then we work our way downwards, and we notice increased focal uptake in the ribs. And it kind of forms a diagonal pattern. It goes throughout the ribs like this. And then we work our way down, and we notice further increased uptake in the spine, and the posterior side, over here and over here. And then we work our way downwards. Um, and then everything else seems to be normal. Um, so this is actually indicative of a trauma, uh, mainly because of the pattern of the ribs. You can kind of see how these are the places where the ribs were broken and they kind of form a diagonal line throughout. This likely is due to degenerative changes, which can also be picked up by bone scans. Um, so again, this is very different from metastatic or metabolic pattern. Um, and metastatic would have increased areas of uptake dispersed throughout, um, while metabolic would be more symmetrical patterns and the sternal tie and skull sign that we all discussed in the last slide. Again, starting from the top and working our way to the bottom, uh, we notice the skull appears to be normal and no increased focal areas of uptake or any diffuse uptake present anywhere. And then working our way downward, we see this focal areas of uptake along the ribs. Again, this forms a diagonal pattern like we saw earlier. Um, so this is indicative of trauma. And we can see as we work our way downwards, everything else appears to be normal. Some degenerative changes present, although this is kind of the main area of concern. So this would be another pattern for trauma. So we're just going to quickly summarize what we discussed in the video. So again, bone scans and the three most common things identified usually include metabolic disease, metastatic disease, or trauma, and the various signs we discussed. So again, identifying metabolic disease, for example, a diffuse uptake in the skulls, a sternal tie, costochondral beating, a very symmetrical pattern in the joints area with increased uptake. Comparing that to metastatic disease, which has very focal areas of increase in uptake scattered throughout, as we can see here, not a symmetrical pattern usually. Uh, and comparing that to trauma, which we can note in the ribs area over here um, with a very diagonal pattern. So again, these are just very general patterns um, that you use to identify what's kind of going on. And obviously it gets more complicated than this. Um, and there's very specific nuances to it. But this is just a brief overview of bone scans. Hopefully this video was helpful. Thank you guys for watching.